Can you say amen? Amen. You may be seated. Now, this, the title of this message is Light and Truth. Thank you, Philip. Appreciate that. Is Light and Truth coming out of that passage that we just noted. And I'll, I'll begin this by saying that at the beginning of almost, if not all, but certainly almost all American colleges when they began in this country, they emphasized spiritual or scriptural literacy. They, they founded colleges and universities that was the base of those was Christian moral principles, expressing even salvation through Christ. And all teaching was based on a biblical worldview. Just to, to name a few, when 17,000 Puritans moved into New England in 1636, Harvard was founded with, with the idea of not only training young people for, for life, but training clergy for the, what was going to become, soon to become, a new commonwealth. Every professor that was hired at Harvard in 1636 was to, they were all Christians, and they were to emphasize formation based on Scripture, equipping men and women to be ministers of the Word of God. On the diploma for Harvard during those early years was this, these, this, word, out of, this word out of Latin, translated from Latin, truth for Christ and the church. That was on every diploma. Harvard's mission statement came out of John 17.3. It says, everyone shall consider as the main end of his life and studies to know God and Jesus Christ, which is eternal life. That was their mission statement. The motto translating from Latin was for the glory of Christ. In 1646, they put out their rules and precepts, and you'll see them shared up on the screen. This is the rules and precepts at, at Harvard in 1646. Let every student be plainly instructed and earnestly pressed to consider well the main end of his life and studies is to know God and Jesus Christ, which is eternal life, and therefore to lay Christ as the only foundation of all sound knowledge and learning. See the Lord only as a giver of wisdom. Let everyone seriously set himself by prayer in secret, sorry, in secret to seek it of him. Everyone shall so exercise himself in reading the scriptures twice a day that he shall be ready to give such an account of his proficiency therein, both in theoretical observations of language and logic and in practical and spiritual truths, since the entrance of the word gives life, it gives understanding to the simple. That was the rules and the precepts of Harvard in 1646. 1718, Yale began under the leadership of, of Connecticut Congregationalists. Their model was light and truth. On their coat of arms was the Yale blue that you might be familiar with, but it had an open book that had the Hebrew words Urim and Thummim. And if you're familiar with the Old Testament, Urim and Thummim is the stones that was carried in the breast of the priest whenever they went before the Lord. They sought God's wisdom and guidance, where now we have the inner inner uh, work of the Holy Spirit, they look to the Urim and Thummim to give direction based on how God translated the color upon those stones. But Yale had that on, uh, up on their open book, on their coat of arms, basically to say, we follow the direction of the Lord. Princeton was started by New Jersey Presbyterians, and their motto was, under the protection of God, she flourishes. And their seal was the Old Testament and New Testament. Brown University in Rhode Island was started in the Baptist church, and their motto was, in God we hope. Uh, Dartmouth in New Hampshire, uh, their motto was the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. And on their shield was the words, Hebrew words, El Shaddai, 
Columbia's motto was, in thy light shall we see light. Now, Duke University came along in 1924, funded by a guy by the name of James Dukes. And this is what he said, the aim of Duke University are to assert a faith in the eternal union of knowledge and religion set forth in the teachings and character of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That was just a hundred years ago. All of these schools had a common commitment that the authority even of the school would be God's word. And what would be expressed is the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need for every student to be able to influence society by what they were learning at these schools. Every young man or young lady that walked onto those campuses, they had a sense of calling and a sense of service. Many of them turned out to be very faithful clergy people. Now, you know well as I do that, that times have changed. And unfortunately, what we've seen with a, a lot of education, of course not all, but a lot of education is more of a commitment to, to liberalism and to secularism and humanism. And people grow very hostile toward biblical Christianity. That unfortunately, many of these schools that I just mentioned, which we know are Ivy League schools, they don't resemble at all what the founders envisioned. Now, we, we call this these four weeks that we're going to do taking ground because each week we're going to deal with something that we're doing here at CTC that we believe is taking ground back from the enemy. Taking ground back. We can, we, we are called to be a church to have impact and have influence. We're never satisfied with just opening those doors on Sunday morning, have a holy huddle, rah-rah team, and everybody break and go do their life. Never been satisfied with that. We believe that CTC is called to be a church that's, that has impact, that has influence, that's a change agent in society, and that our desire, our heart, is to be transforming properties invading darkness with the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, with everything that we see going on in the world, we can complain, whether it be crime and, and uh, political divisions or even education, we can complain about it. Or we can do what I think the church is supposed to do, and that's invade the darkness. That's invade the darkness and bring and bring light. Now, I'm not just talking about Church Universal, although we certainly want to join Church Universal all over the world, but I'm, I'm talking about CTC particularly. One of the things that we done a few years ago was our CLS, which was our uh, leadership school, city leadership school. The idea behind the leadership school was to raise up young people through our intern program and train them. M some of them, I think, might have been also doing some college classes, but many of them were, were of age where they were out of high school and was able to, to do some study through some of our curriculum and also participate in our intern program. That has been very successful over the years and has progressed now, uh, and I think this is the first time I'm showing this logo to what is now our City Bible College. And this is an accredited Bible College that we have here through Portland Bible College. We have live instructors. Last year it was our last year of doing the leadership school with the intern program. We are now shifting this so that it's a, a full-blown Bible College for anyone that wants to engage in Bible College credits, work toward their degree or whatever they want to do. We've even changed the times that we're doing this so that now that you can take evening classes, those of you that are work, that got careers, got families, if you want to learn and grow and know God's word, then you have an opportunity to do this. The Bible college, uh, first, uh, this semester starts August 26th. If you have any interest in it uh, at all, then you can tap uh, uh, in front of you or even see them at the, at the connect table. 
Uh, some of our, I don't know if all the professors are here. Pastor Ralph was here earlier. I don't know if Abel's here. Uh, obviously, myself, Renel, uh, Pastor Philip. But we'll be teaching classes, Bible doctrine, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Old Testament survey, New Testament survey. And the idea is that, that you will learn more about God's Word. Some of you may not want to do it for a degree. Some of you may want to just audit the class just to learn more. That's going to be open to you. Why is this important to us? Number one, because of biblical literacy. Biblical literacy. Uh, the American Bible Society put out this study. I read it in early 2023, uh, but it, it dealt with 2021 through 22 that says nearly 26 Americans reduced or stopped their interaction with Scripture. 26 million people less started reading the Bible. Christianity Today surveyed Christians in 2020, and only 20% of 20% Christians surveyed read their Bible every day. Now, I'm, I'm, an, I'm here to tell you, the Scripture has said this, that we are destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. We are destroyed. And the result of lack, the lack of knowledge is disheartening consequences. It's very easy for us to look at where the world is gone and complain about it. But I got to tell you something, Christians, this is on us. This is on us. The only institution on the planet that God is trusting to make a difference in the world is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us. He invested in his life in us that we might be the ones to carry his message. And I know many times we can, we can complain about politicians, and believe me, I do. We can complain about sinners, and I do. We can complain about people's ignorance. We can complain about people's activity, and I do. But the bottom line is, this is all on us because it's our responsibility to be change agents in the world. And if it's not the church that's making changes in the hearts of people, then there's no way anybody can be changed. Am I talking to the right church? And having the Word of God in us to where we even know when things are proposed that are non-Christian, how we should respond to that. Unfortunately, instead of us being the influencers, we're being influenced. Our capacity to give answers to our neighbors and our friends about the decline of society is based on the fact of whether we know the Word of God. And we are to know it. We're commanded to know it. And there's good reasons. You have experienced the power of the Word just like I have. You've experienced the power of the Word. It was the Word of God that delivered you. It was the Word of God that gave you guidance. It was the Word of God that gave you wisdom. It was the Word of God that lifted you when you were brokenhearted. It was the Word of God that helped you grow and become mature. It was the Word of God that released ministry in your life and brought you to a place of biblical prosperity. It was the Word of God that binded your family together and led you in the right direction. It was the Word of God that gave you hope and despair, that provided solutions for your life, that gave you relationship and led you to a place to have revelation from Jesus Christ. That was the Word of God. And it's that same Word of God that people in this world need to have. Can you say amen? The second reason is because ministry multiplication. The more people that we can get equipped, the more small groups, the more teaching that we can do, quality teaching through all of our aspects of ministries. That's why we're designing so people that, are, that are, have careers and working and have other obligations will have an opportunity to come and to learn. Also, the third reason for personal development. I know not everyone wants to be a minister or looking to do anything full-time in Christianity, but I pray all of us have a desire to have a greater understanding of God's Word. And then there's that fourth thing of ministry training. Ministry training, just being trained to be fully equipped that you will carry out what God has called us to do. You're going to see a video of a young man in our church that just came through our CLS uh, program. So I heard about CLS attending here at Church for the City. I wanted to join CLS because I've always been interested in wanting to take Bible courses 
So when I heard uh, we were gonna have a Bible college, basically here at our church, I was like, I definitely need to do it. I felt like God gave me an opportunity to finally go to Bible college, and it was gonna be at my home church. What I think about is in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, it says, work hard so you can present yourself to God and receive his approval. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explains the word of truth. And so when I heard about CLS, I definitely wanted to under, uh, deepen my understanding in the word of God. So the classes definitely benefited me now in my current walk because I got a deeper understanding of the Old and New Testament because I took Old and New Testament survey. So now I'm able to explain it to my friends, family members who have asked me questions about like what's the difference between the Old and the New Testament? How do they connect to each other? And so that definitely is a blessing alone because I'm able to help people understand it through the scriptures. And of course, since we get the material throughout the courses, I could actually reteach those uh, teachings to them. And there's probably a lot of you guys out there who've been wanting to take Bible courses. So I would say go to CLS. This is your time to do it. You won't regret it. You'll be blessed by it. For him and, and every student. Again, if you want more information, you can tap uh, that in front of you or uh, also get some information at the Connect table. The other element for us, and this is something we have been, it's been on my heart probably since we started the church, but certainly has been on our agenda for the last year and a half. And this will be my first time, and I'm so grateful to announce the opening of our school, CTC Kids Academy. There's the, the logo. I'm so grateful uh, for this. These, uh, the school will uh, begin to uh, teach preschoolers beginning uh, this fall. Uh, there's already been staff hired. There will be some more staff that will be hired in the next week or so. Uh, we're only starting with two classrooms now, so we can, we'll open with 40 to 45 preschoolers. Uh, that will grow. The idea is for us to add a, a, a grade every year. Uh, most of that will take place once we uh, build the other sanctuary and, and this building is converted uh, to the school. Uh, I, want to show, I want you to see the, the mission statement for the school. At CTC Kids Academy, our mission is to provide high quality, early childhood education while instilling and exemplifying Christian values. Our vision is to partner with you as a parent to build your faith, to build your child a firm foundation for a lifetime of success and achievement in their academics, their relationships, and their faith. Tremendous. I'm so uh, excited about this. Uh, again, same thing, if you're interested, you can tap uh, the disc in front or also check at the, at the connect table. But I, I do, before I go further, I want to acknowledge the team that has been working on this for quite some time and have just done an amazing job of doing all the, the hard work, the study, the research, working on cost, uh, how we can be competitive uh, in the community, to reduce how much some of you pay for preschool and daycare. And if you're here, I'm just gonna ask you to stand. I do wanna first uh, acknowledge the one who spearheaded this and just done amazing. That's my daughter-in-law, Karina Jones. You can stand, thank you. Those that uh, uh, joined her on the team was Marla Ford, Meredith Nelson, uh, Naomi Sanchez Ortega, if you'll stand. I know I saw you here, Corey Rico, uh, Leah Buchanan, Sarah Chavez, uh, Marquia Horney, Priscilla Jimenez, Lupe Rojas, Stephanie Priest, Jolene Morales, and Christy Hughes. If those of you are here, stand. I just appreciate you. God bless you. Ladies, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so, uh, so much. CTC Kids Academy will provide a nurturing and loving environment for children. Just like the church is a safe place, we have no doubt that the school will be a safe place where these children will be loved and have an opportunity to grow. Our comprehensive, we will offer comprehensive curriculum. It's designed to prepare these young people for kindergarten and beyond. Uh, the curriculum will include both academic and faith-based components. The academic components, of course, will be reading, writing, and math, the faith-based components will help the children learn about God, learn the Bible, and Christian values. We will hire qualified and caring teachers 
Uh, they will undergo regular training and ensure to provide the best possible education for the students. And they will also ensure that it's a, it's a safe place where the children are well cared for. The CTC Academy will help children develop a strong foundation of faith. They'll learn the basic values of our faith and, and those values that come from that, honesty, res respect, and responsibility with these things that will guide the children all the days of their life. Every teacher will model Christian principles. They'll live their life out loud. It will be a life of faith that will be modeled for the children. And most of all, which is very important to me, we're gonna help parents instill those Christian values in your children. Well, we'll come alongside you like we do now with our kids ministry, our youth ministry, young adult ministry. We wanna see parents be effective in raising their children. In a world of chaos, in a world of confusion, in a world of hostility, we want to come alongside you and help you instill these values in your children, that your child will be confident when they enter into the world and as they progress in their own life, that the values that you teach them will be values that they could carry all the days of their life. Now, why is this important to us? I, first of all, believe that all children's education should be Bible-centered Bible and God-centered. All, all education should be based on that. Now, I know there's going to be other things you're going to learn, engineering and uh, uh, aerodynamics, et cetera. I get that. But I, I believe the foundation of any child's education should be Bible-centered and God-centered. Now, that's not something, yeah, I think, I'm glad somebody agrees. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, make sure you're sitting there every Sunday. Now, the thing is, and this is not something that I created. This is scriptural. Ephesians 6, 4 says this, fathers do not provoke your children to anger. But listen to this, bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Again, the weight upon all of this is us as parents, that we cannot count on others to be the main educators for us. But I, I do know that you can trust others that have the same values to come and partner with you, that that job will be done. Deuteronomy 6, 6 and 7 says, And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. The Scripture is real clear that our, that our job of education is all the days of the life of our children, that we are to constantly be educating them from a biblical perspective. And so you don't want those 12 years of, them, of their schooling to be secular in nature and then think somewhere down the line after those 12 years, I can combat all of that and they'll become solid Christians. It needs to be foundation. It needs to be Bible-based. The second thing is this, education should be positive and truthful. Truthful meaning that it comes from the Word of God, or at least the basis of the teaching comes from the Word of God. I, d I don't have to tell you, you're, you're, those of you that are parents, you know the conversations or the conversations you should be having with your children now when they come home from school, because we see it all over the place, the things that they're learning, the things that they're being taught. Some things I guess maybe you're not hearing because they're teaching them at school, don't go home and tell your parents this. This is, this is what we're battling against. I, I think all education should be positive and should be, tr should be truthful. I, I'm a firm believer that the Word of God still works. I'm a firm believer that these principles that are in this Bible, there, there are some folks who think that the Bible no longer works in the real world because, you know, life has changed, people have changed. Over the years, things have changed, and these are just a bunch of old men who don't really know what life is like, to, like, like today. I, I completely reject that. I believe the Word of God is still the truth. And no matter what era we're in, no matter what age we're in, no matter what culture we're in, these principles still work. Because it's not something that I wrote. It's not something that you wrote. It's not even something that old men wrote. It is the inspired Word of God. And far as I know, God has never been wrong. God's never missed it. God's never made a mistake. God's never made a bad decision. I would want to learn from the one that I know gets it right every time. Now listen, because Tyrone P. Jones is always in a mess, I always got to have good attorneys. 
and I am not looking for an attorney that says, hey, man, how, you think you're confident on this? Well, sometimes I miss it. Eh, I'm out of that office. I'm looking for the attorney that says, no, I got confidence. I'll get this right. And same thing, I'm getting 60 years old. Got to see doctors more than I used to. I'm not going to a doctor and say, doc, you think you can fix me? Well, man, it's 50-50, it's bro. You might make it out of here and you, you may not. Give me your phone just in case I got to call your wife. I'm out of there. I'm out of there. You're looking for a doctor that has confidence they can fix it. There is no more confidence that we can have than in the Word of God. God gets it right every single time. And so it should absolutely be truthful. Number three is Christian schooling is a good way of transforming society. Matthew 5, 13 to 14 says this, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hid. This is talking about us. This is talking about the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Team, you can come. Society is to be influenced and guided by us as Christians. School is where a lot of children learn how to think. It's, learn how to, it's where they learn how to, to relate to others and how to have an influence. And I think the whole process ought to be biblical-based, Christian-based, especially for those of us who name the name of Jesus Christ. Those 12 years of their life when they're in school, I absolutely believe it ought to be in a place where they're guided and they're influenced by the principles of the Lord. Can you say amen to that? If, if, if that doesn't happen, then the church becomes mute. Christians become mute. Our lamps are no longer shining bright. We're no longer salty. And Jesus said when we've lost our saltiness, then we're good. We're good for nothing. We're good for nothing. And, and we know that we are in a dark society. But I'm, I'm telling you, I want to maintain the hope that God gives me in the Scripture. God gives me in the Scripture that light will still shine. Light will still shine. Listen to this. Isaiah 42, 6 says, I am the Lord. I have called you for a righteous purpose, and I will hold you by your hand. I will watch over you, and I will appoint you to be a covenant for the people, and listen to this, a light to the nations. God is counting on us. God is relying on us. God is relying on the church. This is on us to continue to be the light that shines forth. When darkness is overwhelming, it's us being the light of the world that absolutely makes the difference. When we talked about this series in our content meeting, Pastor, uh, Pastor Philip made a statement that we have to stop trying to sneak in, sneak into darkness with a candle. And we need to start storming the gates of hell with light and truth. And I absolutely stand by that. Isaiah 61 and 2 says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen up on you. This is what God is saying about us as the church, that we can rise, we can shine. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, which it has, thick darkness to peoples, but the Lord will rise up on you and his glory will be up on you. It's that truth, that's principle that we stand by. We want to be light that's invading the darkness. And this verse that I read to you earlier, 2 Corinthians 4, 6, out of the New Living, it says, For God who said, let there be light in darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts so we can know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. It's an interesting passage because what what Paul is doing here, writing to those at the church of Corinth, is acknowledging what he knew that they were struggling with. If, if, you, if you were to read 2 Corinthians 4 in that first verse, it says, therefore having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart. The reason Paul wrote that is because Corinth, I guess, would be, if you was, I guess, to make it Americanized, Corinth was talked about like many people talk about Las Vegas today here in America. A lot of business, a lot of commerce, a lot of people, but a lot of debauchery, a lot of sin, a lot of, lot of stuff going on, and a lot of people went there to do, to do all kind of crazy stuff. 
But there was a group of people that when, when Paul got there, they heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and their heart was changed. They were convinced that there is a God and a Savior. In spite of all of the gods that they had, they were convinced that there is a true God. And many of them surrendered their life from the life that they had and began to give their life to Jesus Christ. A great church grew up there very quickly. But, but, the, but the Christians there got a little bit disillusioned because they had the mindset, once we heard the gospel, we came to Jesus. We gave up our old life and embraced this new life. But yet, my friends aren't doing that. My family aren't doing that. People that they worked with, they thought that they were going to react the same way to the point that they became discouraged, almost to the point that they thought the only ones here that's going to be saved is the ones that saved right now, and that's it. That mindset even affected the apostle Paul because if you read in Acts chapter 18, Paul was getting ready to leave Corinth because they were running against so much hostility. The Christians that was there was gathering, but not others was coming to the Lord. No, none of us was receiving Christ. They thought it would be a simple message. They can see the distinction in our lives. Why don't they just embrace what we know is true? But for some reason or other, it wasn't happening. And Paul said that I'm going to go ahead and leave. <clears throat> the Lord came to him in Acts chapter 18, verses 9 and 10, and said, Paul, do not leave this city. There are many people here who are still yet to come. I want you to keep preaching the gospel. Don't be concerned about the hostility and watch what the power of God does. Paul stayed there another year and a half and kept preaching the gospel. So he's writing to them and telling them now, don't lose heart. I know it's dark. It may seem hostile. There's a whole lot of resistance. But remember, we have the light of the gospel. We have the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. And no matter how dark it gets, it cannot overcome light. No matter how chaotic it gets, it cannot overcome light. No matter how society is all twisted and confused, I'm telling you, nothing is greater than the light of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, yeah, absolutely, we're coming in storming the gates. We're storming prison gates. We're storming education gates. We're storming the foster care system. We're storming the gates of San Luis, Arizona. We're coming in, bringing the light that we know can invade darkness. It's called the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a light that will shine greater than anything else. Everybody stand if you would. Prayer team, you can come. I'm going to pray for you. Pray for us. I just want you to grab a hold of this. You, 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 think you're, you, you may think you're nothing and nobody. You may just think, man, pastor, all I do is I'm just a guy that works in the, in the field on a tractor. Or I'm, I'm just a person that files stuff away in the office. I'm just a person that gets reports ready for the doctor. He's the big guy. No, no, no. If you're a born-again believer, you need to catch this. God is counting on you. You are the most important. I don't care what office you work in. You, you need to start walk, walking in that office every day saying, I'm the most important here. I'm the most important person here because I'm coming in here with light and I'm coming in here with truth. When you go to that, that college campus or that, that school campus, you need to walk on those grounds. I'm the most important person here. I'm coming in here with light and I'm coming in here with truth. When you go in that boardroom and into that meeting, into that interview, you need to walk in there. I'm the one coming in here carrying light and truth because my God is counting on you. But he hasn't set you up to fail because he's given you the Holy Spirit. The, the uncomparable power of God is in you. Nothing, there is no weapon form against you that can fail. Not a weapon can form to get you that would fail. I'm telling you folks, we're going to win this thing. People are looking up on the church and thinking we're a bunch of limping, weak folks. You just keep watching CTC. We are storming gates and going out of here victorious because we know who we are in Christ Jesus. Father, I want to thank you for this opportunity that we have to hear your word, to be encouraged by your truth. Father, help us embrace these opportunities to become better as parents as we help our children be educated, to become better as leaders as we help our congregation to know the Word of God, to be better facilitators of education for those that you've trusted us with, but above all, Lord God, to be light 
and to be truth in this county that people may know there is a Jesus, a God who loves them and saves them, that they may be transformed. In Christ's name we pray. May the people of God say amen. God bless you. Have a great day.